Final Fantasy VII Remake is one of the most accomplished games of the year, taking the series' debut into 3D in 1997 and turning it into something extraordinary. At the time, the Final Fantasy VII models were pretty basic, and even in battles, it's mostly just them standing there with a looping idle animation, which occasionally switches into an attack animation. It works for its time, and it's actually the same system Pokemon uses to this day, but in Remake, they were specifically pursuing a heightened sense of reality. Recently, Alicia Haddock reported on a CEDEC talk for the OtaQuest website. This is essentially the Japanese equivalent of the US-based Games Developers Conference, where Japanese game developers talk about some of the tech and design behind their games. This talk in particular was held by lead animation programmer Ryu Hara and facial director Akira Iwasara from Square Enix. From the onset, those aren't exactly the sort of roles you'd think about when it comes to animation. And that's kind of the point, because this talk was wasn't so much about the swishes and slashes of 7 Remake, but rather what comes in between, and how each of these animations are able to feel natural. The answer is in automation, thus the role of animation programmer. This is something that's very prevalent in AAA games today. There are tens of hours of playtime, and so many ways to interact with the world that it would be impossible to animate every possible scenario by hand. Therefore, there's automatic blending between the two different motions, and to make this seem believable, they use what's referred to as inertialization, a technique that uses mathematical formulae to calculate the speed at which these animations should blend together, respecting the animator's work in the process. At the same time, they needed to account for level design. Cloud won't always be hanging out on flat ground after all. Pretty much every game has the idea of having both feet touching the ground, but for them it's just that, touching the floor. The animation team at Square Enix added an extra level, adding further hip controls to Cloud. That meant that he wasn't just standing, but balancing. When you stand on a downward slope, you're gonna lean backwards a bit to account for the uneven ground, and now Cloud does the exact same thing. Most of these techniques are kind of unnoticeable individually, but combined, they add up to create animation that feels both realistic and surrealistic at the same time, combining this sense of reality mixed with fantasy. But the one part that would have been noticeable is the facial animations. As with the body, you can't really expect them to hand animate every bit of dialogue throughout the entire entire game, so it gets automated. Problem is, this can go very wrong. Famously, Mass Effect Andromeda had incredibly awkward facial animations for dialogue, and more recently, Captain America's face in the new Avengers game can get kind of disturbing. So this can create a lot of work, needing someone like a facial director, who makes sure that all the faces fit the tone of the dialogue. But more importantly, the face needs to match the dialogue itself. And that's for every language that this game exists in. For this, they used a system known as Happy Sad Face, which matches voice lines to face movements. In this way, they were able to have the game recorded in English, Japanese, French, and German, and have the characters look like they're actually speaking those languages naturally. Thanks for watching OtaQuest in Japan. Feel free to subscribe to find out more about the art and creation of Japanese pop culture.